Picture this, an EMP attack strikes, plunging the world into darkness and chaos. What would you do next? A warning on the growing threat of EMP or electromagnetic pulse weapons. In today's video, we're diving deep into the critical topic of EMP preparedness. Specifically, we'll explore the eight things you should absolutely never do after an EMP attack hits. This guide is essential for anyone concerned about EMP protection and survival. But first, let's talk about what an EMP is. Imagine a giant invisible wave of energy sweeping across the country. That's basically what an EMP or an electromagnetic pulse is. It can be caused by a nuclear explosion, like the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But even a powerful solar storm can trigger one. This might sound like something out of a sci-fi movie, but an EMP attack is a very real threat. The scary part? EMPs don't directly harm humans, but they can fry electronics in an instant. This means everything from your phone and computer to power grids, cars, and even medical equipment could be instantly useless. Without electricity, our entire way of life would be thrown into chaos. Food wouldn't be refrigerated, communication would be impossible, and transportation would come to a standstill. Panic and confusion would spread like wildfire. This might seem overwhelming, but the good news is there are things you can do to prepare. Here are eight mistakes to avoid after an EMP attack. Mistake number eight, giving in to panic. This is the biggest mistake you can make. When everything's gone haywire, staying calm is crucial. Picture a crowded movie theater with a fire alarm. If everyone starts panicking and rushing for the exits, it becomes a deadly situation. We've seen this happen before. Back in 1913, a false fire alarm in a crowded theater caused a stampede, leading to 73 deaths. In a crisis, it's easy to follow the crowd, but staying calm and thinking clearly will help you make the right decisions. Now, if you're wondering what you can do to control your nerves, here are a few tips. Preparation is key. Practice emergency drills with your family. Talk about potential scenarios and have a plan in place. Know your surroundings. Make sure everyone in your household knows where exits are and what to do in an emergency. Be mentally prepared. Imagine yourself in different situations and think about how you would react. By being prepared, you'll be more likely to stay calm and help others around you do the same. Mistake number seven, using damaged electronics after an EMP. Imagine this, the EMP hits and everything goes dark. You reach for your phone to call for help, but it's dead. Frustrating, right? But here's the thing. Using damaged electronics after an EMP can be downright dangerous. Why? Think of an EMP as a giant electric shockwave. It can mess with the insides of electronics, causing all sorts of problems. It's like a mini electrical party gone wrong inside your devices. These problems can range from minor glitches to complete meltdowns. You might see weird error messages, lose important data, or even have the device itself fry up. Not safe at all. So, what can you do? Here's the good news. Not all hope is lost. There are ways to check if your electronics are toast and even some things you can try to fix them. First things first, check for power. Is your device even getting electricity? Also, inspect the connections and see if all the wires are plugged in properly. In some cases, you might be able to reformat the device which is like giving it a fresh electronic start. You could also try replacing damaged parts, but remember, this can get tricky. Let's also talk about preventing this whole mess from happening again. There are ways to shield your electronics from the worst of an EMP, like using a Faraday cage. Imagine a metal box that blocks electromagnetic waves. That's basically what a Faraday cage is. You can buy them pre-made or even create a makeshift one using a metal container. Don't worry, it won't turn your phone into a signal-blocking prison cell, but it can offer some protection during an EMP. Another thing you can do is called grounding. Think of grounding as a safety net for electricity. By connecting your electronics to a proper grounding system, you can also help divert any unexpected currents away from them. Surge protectors can also help absorb those extra voltage spikes. Finally, an EMP will likely knock out the power grid. So having a backup power source like a solar panel or generator will be crucial for keeping some of your electronics running and helping you diagnose the damage to others. Mistake number six, cars after the EMP. Now let's address a big question. 
Can you use your car to escape after an EMP? The short answer? Maybe. There's a lot of talk about EMPs frying cars, but the truth is, it's not that simple. Modern cars are loaded with fancy electronics, sure, but they also have built-in safeguards against electrical disruptions. Think of them like tiny suits of armor for your car's sensitive parts. Here's the cool part. There have been studies, like the one by the US Commission to assess the threat of electromagnetic pulse attack, that show most cars might actually survive an EMP. They tested a bunch of vehicles, and only about 1 in 50 got totally disabled. Even then, those were mostly older models built between 1987 and 2002. But what about newer cars? Things get a bit trickier with brand new cars. They're packed with even more electronics, and there haven't been any large-scale tests on them recently. The last big study was back in 2004, so there's some uncertainty. However, despite common fears, the resilience of modern vehicles suggests that they are not as vulnerable to EMP damage as once thought, especially considering their protective measures and the relatively lesser extent of cabling compared to critical infrastructure like the power grid. So don't count on your car being a guaranteed escape route after an EMP. It might work, it might not. Here are some things to consider. Older, simpler cars might be your best bet. Less fancy electronics means less to get fried. Think classics like older Land Rovers or even diesel trucks without all the modern computer bits. You can get your hands on some EMP-hardened vehicles, which are mostly used by the military. But some companies are developing them for civilians, too. Also, always have a plan B for transportation. Let's face it, even without an EMP, relying solely on a car isn't the best survival plan. Bicycles, horses, or even your own two feet are reliable options that don't need gas or electricity. Here's a bonus tip. If you're thinking long term, consider keeping an older car around, well maintained with some spare parts. Store those parts in a Faraday cage to block the electromagnetic waves. That way, even if the car gets a little zapped by an EMP, you might be able to fix it up later. Mistake number five, ignoring water safety. Now let's tackle something even more crucial, water. After an EMP, clean water might be harder to find than a working gas station. With treatment plants potentially down, trusting your usual tap water becomes risky. Contaminated water can lead to nasty illnesses, so we need to be prepared. So how do you go about this? First things first, identify safe water sources. Here are some options. Your hot water heater. That tank could be holding a hidden stash of clean water, perfect for drinking and cooking. Melted ice. Got a freezer full of ice? Once it melts, you can purify it for drinking. Just remember, the longer the power's been out, the warmer your freezer might be, so check for spoilage. Rainwater. This can be a good option, but only if it hasn't touched any contaminated surfaces. Think about collecting it from a clean tarp or directly into a container. No matter where you find your water, you need to purify it before drinking. Here are your options. Boiling is the simplest and most effective method. Just bring the water to a rolling boil for at least a minute and let it cool before drinking. If boiling is impossible, you can use water purification tablets. They are usually easy to stock up on, especially for occasions like this. Follow the instructions carefully on these products. And even if that doesn't work or is impossible, you can use a clean cloth or a portable water filter to remove some particles and microorganisms. Remember, filtering alone might not kill all the bad stuff, so it's best to use it with another purification method like boiling or disinfection. Now once your water is purified, store it safely. Here's the key. Clean containers with tight lids. This will prevent your precious water from getting recontaminated. For long-term solutions and ultimate peace of mind, consider a home water filtration or treatment system. These come in different levels of complexity, from simple pitchers with filters to high-tech reverse osmosis systems. No matter which one you choose, make sure you install and maintain it properly to get the most out of it. Remember, water is life. By being prepared to find, purify, and store safe water, you'll be one step ahead after an EMP attack. Mistake number four, drawing attention to yourself. Don't be a walking billboard of wealth. This might sound strange, but hear me out. After an EMP, things will be tough. Resources will be scarce, 
and people will be desperate. The last thing you want to do is advertise that you have stuff others might need. Imagine a world without working stores or ATMs. Suddenly that fancy watch or name brand clothes become less about style and more about a target on your back. Think about it. Some desperate for food might see your fancy new backpack and decide to borrow it permanently. Here's how to stay under the radar. Make sure you have your needs and wants sorted out. Always prioritize your needs before wants. Focus on getting things you absolutely need to survive, like food, water, and shelter. Forget about designer jeans and the latest gadgets for now. A sturdy, non-branded backpack is just as useful as a designer one, especially if it keeps you safe. Store your supplies securely and out of sight. Don't leave them lying around where anyone can see them. Here's something important to consider. Always remember there is strength in numbers. Instead of everyone fending for themselves, consider forming a community. Sharing resources can benefit everyone and make you less of a target. Think about it. A group of people working together can gather more resources and keep a better lookout for each other. Learn how to collect and purify rainwater. Plant a garden. Learn to forage wild plants safely or raise some chickens for eggs. Also, don't throw things away. Learn how to fix broken tools and clothes instead of replacing them. Speaking of money, use and invest it wisely. Think about it. What good is the stock share you bought in the S&P 500 if every electronic device is down? Instead, focus on things that will help you survive, like precious metals or tools. Remember, in a post-EMP world, it's not about showing off how much you have. It's about being smart, resourceful, and working together as a community. Mistake number three, not keeping plans confidential. This might seem obvious, but it's more important than you think. There's a fancy term for this in the military world, OPSEC, which stands for operational security. OPSEC is fundamentally about keeping sensitive information away from those who could use it against you. Initially developed by the military, OPSEC principles are widely applicable, especially in post-disaster scenarios like an EMP strike where the stakes are significantly high. Imagine you're playing a game of poker, but the whole world is watching your cards. That's kind of what happens after an EMP when resources are scarce and people are desperate. You don't want everyone to know what you have and where you keep it. OPSEC helps you keep your cards close to your chest. Here are a few tips on how you can be an OPSEC master. Start by identifying what information is critical to your survival and security. This might include the locations of your supplies, details of your shelter, or plans for acquiring resources and defending yourself. By understanding what needs protection, you can prioritize your efforts. Consider potential threats beyond traditional adversaries. In the aftermath of an EMP, opportunists may exploit the chaos to target those perceived as having resources. Understanding these threats helps you develop strategies to counter them effectively. In today's digital age, be mindful of your digital footprint. Avoid sharing sensitive information online that could reveal your level of preparedness or the resources you possess. This caution extends to communications. Ensure your methods are secure and encrypted whenever possible to prevent interception. Limit information sharing to a need-to-know basis. Share operational plans and resource details only with individuals directly involved in your survival strategy. This selective approach minimizes the risk of inadvertently exposing critical information. Regularly review and update your OPSEC practices. Threats can evolve, and your situation may change. Stay vigilant by reassessing and adjusting your security measures to maintain their effectiveness in the face of shifting circumstances. Educate and train everyone in your group about OPSEC. Ensure they understand the importance of confidentiality and how to implement basic security measures. By fostering a culture of discretion and awareness, you strengthen your collective security posture. Knowledge is power. By keeping your plans and resources a secret, you'll be one step ahead of the game. Mistake number two, traveling alone. In a world without electricity, facing danger solo is a recipe for trouble. That's why we're talking about the power of groups. Imagine walking through a dark forest after an EMP. Alone, you're an easy target, but with a trusted group, you can watch each other's backs. Think of it like having a pack of wolves. Together, you're stronger and more likely to survive. Now, by that logic, 
you might think cities would be safer with all the people around. But not after an EMP. That can be a bad thing. More people means more competition for scarce resources like food and water. Rural areas, on the other hand, tend to be less crowded. You'll have more space to grow your own food, and there's a better chance you'll find people who already know how to live off the land. The most important point here is finding your tribe. Building a network of people prepared for an EMP is a smart move. Think about it. You can share resources, skills, and knowledge. It's like having a built-in support system when things get tough. Traveling or relocating with a group has its advantages. People can take turns keeping watch, gathering supplies, or defending your shelter. Imagine one person being a skilled hunter while another knows how to treat illnesses. Together, you're a well-oiled survival machine. Besides, many rural communities already have strong bonds and know how to help each other in tough times. These communities often band together after a crisis, forming groups that can protect themselves and share resources. Sure, maybe you're a tough guy and think you can handle anything alone. But why take the risk? A group offers more security, knowledge, and a better chance of surviving the challenges of a post-EMP world. Mistake number one, not thinking long term. Surviving in the first few days after an EMP is important, but that's just the beginning. We need to be prepared for the long term. Think back to the days before electricity. That's kind of what the world might be like after an EMP. Supermarkets won't be stocked, and the tap water won't run. That's why we need to learn how to live off the land. You might need to learn how to grow your own food, raise animals if possible, and safely forage for wild plants. This may be a big change from your grocery store routine, but it's a crucial skill to have. Also, you'd want to find or create a reliable source of clean water, like a well or a rainwater collection system. And while preparing for the long haul, you wouldn't want to do it all alone. Building a community of like-minded people can provide security, shared resources, and a sense of belonging. Think of it like a team effort for survival. The first few days after an EMP will be rough, but don't lose sight of the future. By learning traditional skills, building a community and protecting some of your tech, you'll be well on your way to thriving, not just surviving, in a post-EMP world. Speaking of an EMP attack, have you ever wondered which states would be the toughest places to be during an EMP attack? Click the video on screen to find out the top 10 worst states to be in when SHTF.